New discoveries are rewriting when humans first reached the Americas, with every find pushing the date further back, older and older and older. But with each revelation, the question becomes more urgent. How far does this story really go? And are we seeing evidence that humans arrived hundreds of thousands of years earlier than we thought? Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history, and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. These footprints have completely rewritten the story of when humans arrived in America. First announced in 2021 and now confirmed beyond doubt, they don't just push back the timeline by a few centuries, they shatter it completely, proving there's a massive chunk of American prehistory that we've completely missed. But we're only just scratching the surface. For most of the 20th century, archaeologists got it very wrong. It was agreed that humans arrived in the Americas only around 13,000 years ago. They crossed a land bridge from Siberia and moved south, using a corridor between two massive ice sheets. Stone spear points, now called Clovis points, were found across North America, which backs this up. And in the 1960s, archaeologist C. Vance Haynes used radiocarbon dating to prove these dated back to between 11,000 and 11,500 years ago. That fit perfectly with what geologists knew about the ice sheets. A corridor had opened around this time, creating a narrow window for migration, and that's when humans apparently first arrived. This idea became known as the Clovis First Model. Clovis people were the first humans in the Americas, and everything else came after them. But the Clovis First Model became more than just a theory. From the 1920s onwards, some researchers actively suppressed claims of earlier human presence, and by the time radiocarbon dating started validating Clovis, the model hardened into dogma. If you think cancel culture is bad now, try suggesting humans arrived before 13,000 years ago back then. It was pretty much career suicide. In 1976, a 27-year-old archaeologist named Tom Dillahay was working in southern Chile when he discovered Monte Verde, a waterlogged settlement along a creek bed. This site contained wooden structures, stone tools, medicinal plants, and even butchered parts of mastodons, and the evidence suggested people had been living there around 14,500 years ago, possibly as much as 19,000 years ago. Now, this was obviously much older than the Clovis model said was possible, and the reaction from academia was… hostile. Cue the anonymous letters sent to his university, demanding he get fired. At academic conferences, colleagues refused to shake his hand. Someone even sent a letter to a Chilean newspaper alleging he was a CIA plant. Dillahay knew the only way forward was overwhelming evidence, so he spent years compiling two massive volumes with data from 60 different specialists. And it worked. Finally, in 1997, 20 years later, a panel of previously skeptical archaeologists visited Monte Verde in person. They examined everything and unanimously accepted that Monte Verde was older than Clovis. Which is all well and good, but if one pre-Clovis site existed, then there had to be others. So then the question became, how many? Once archaeologists started looking properly, pre-Clovis sites began appearing across both North and South America, and some of them were far older than anyone expected. In Idaho, researchers excavating Cooper's Ferry found stone tools and biological remains dated to between 16,500 and 15,200 years ago. This site was important because it sat right at the confluence of the Salmon River and the Columbia River Basin, exactly where early Pacific coastal migrants would naturally turn inland, which meant it vindicated Knut Fladmark's 1979 Kelp Highway hypothesis, the idea that people had migrated down the Pacific coast rather than through the ice-free corridor. Before this point, Fladmark had also been dismissed for decades. Then there was Bluefish Caves in Canada. This had cut marked mammoth and horse bones, dated to around 24,000 years ago, pushing human presence back into the last glacial maximum itself. The archaeologist who discovered it, Jacques Saint Mars, had also been a victim of the Clovis First lobby. His career was effectively destroyed until he was finally vindicated in 2017, four long decades after his discovery. He died only a few years later. But other sites soon followed, like Paisley Caves in Oregon and Paige Ladson in Florida. Thus, by the early 2000s, the weight of evidence meant Clovis First was finished. It's sad that it took so long, and that many archaeologists effectively lost their careers for, you know, doing their job. But even these dates look tame compared to what came next. 
So let's hop over to White Sands National Park in New Mexico, because this is where everything blows apart. Researchers discovered dozens of human footprints, adults, teenagers, children, all walking across what had once been the shore of a glacial lake. The site wasn't announced until 2019, and the footprints were dated in 2021 using radiocarbon analysis of aquatic plant seeds trapped in the sediment layers. The results showed the footprints were 21 to 23,000 years old, almost 10,000 years before Clovis. Immediately, critics argued the dates were wrong, so in October 2023, researchers returned to the site and dated it using three completely different methods and materials. Terrestrial pollen from the same layers, quartz grains using optical luminescence, the lake bed mud itself. All three came back with the same, staggeringly old age. Some of the footprints show what appears to be a hunt, with human footprints following directly inside the tracks of a giant ground sloth, matching its elongated stride. The sloth's prints show signs of panic. At one point, it reared up on its hind legs and spun around, likely in defense. The hunters were right there, stalking it step by step. Another trackway shows something quieter but just as profound. A woman or adolescent walking with a very young child across the wet mud for over a mile. You can see where she carried the child, then set it down to walk, then picked it up again. This is one of the reasons the White Sands footprints are so fascinating. They're snapshots of real moments. But the footprints also blow our understanding of human history wide open. Because if humans were around here 23,000 years ago, then their arrival must have been earlier than that. And thus the question is now completely up in the air. Do we have any idea how long humans have been in the Americas? Once the minimum date shifted that far back, archaeologists started re-examining sites they'd dismissed for decades. Some of these are cautiously accepted by parts of the mainstream, others are completely dismissed. But if even one of them holds up, the entire story flips on its head. One interesting example is Chiquihuita Cave in central Mexico. The stone tools found there have been dated to between 31 and 33,000 years ago, using over 50 radiocarbon and optical dates. That's almost twice as old as White Sands. Then there's Pedra Furada in Brazil, where researchers claim evidence of human activity going back 30,000 years or more, although critics argue the tools are just rocks broken down by natural forces. But then there are the really extreme outliers, sites so old that most archaeologists won't even entertain them. These aren't accepted yet, but they do matter because they contain solid evidence and raise a very important question. One of the biggest is this, the Ceruti Mastodon site in California. In 1992 and 93, paleontologists unearthed mastodon bones that had been sharply broken. Alongside them were large cobblestones showing impact marks and wear patterns that looked like hammers and anvils used by humans. The team knew this was going to be really big, so they didn't publish until 2017 in Nature, one of the most prestigious journals in the world. And when the date came back, it was mind-blowing, 130,000 years ago. It's hard to prove that it's human activity, but it looks like it, and the date is staggeringly old. There's also Huayatlaco in Mexico, where stone tools were found beneath 10 meters of sediment. Here, dating puts the site at roughly 250,000 years old. If you want to learn more about this one, I did a whole video on it. And there's Calico in California, where over 11,500 tools were found as a site dated to over 200,000 years old. Of course, again, it's hard to prove intentional human flint napping. But one thing that makes this one impossible to dismiss outright is that Louis Leakey, the 20th century's most prominent human origins researcher, believed in this extraordinarily ancient date. So all these sites, while controversial, point to the possibility of humans being in the Americas hundreds of thousands of years earlier than we thought. That's pretty crazy. And the mystery deepens even further when we look at genetics. If you trace the maternal DNA lineages of Native Americans, four of them lead clearly back to East Asia. You find a lot of haplogroups A, B, C, and D across Siberia, Mongolia, and Central Asia. But then there's haplogroup X2A, and this doesn't fit at all. It shows up in ancient Native American remains, including Kennewick Man, who lived 9,000 years ago in what's now Washington State. It's also found in living populations. The Ojibwe carry it at 25%, the Sioux at 15%, and the Nuchanulf at 12%, so it's clearly a Native American lineage. But when researchers looked for X2A's closest genetic relatives in the Old World, they found them in Europe, the Mediterranean, the Near East, and the Caucasus, not in Siberia or in East Asia, not in any of the regions humans supposedly traveled through to reach the Americas. X2A is completely absent from the entire migration route, so where did it come from? 
The current mainstream view is that X2A arose within North America itself, as a new mutation after the founding populations had already arrived. But that raises its own questions, like why would a random mutation spread so widely, and why do its closest relatives still live thousands of miles away in Western Eurasia? It's clear that the earliest Americans weren't necessarily who we thought, and the genetic pathways don't match any single migration route that we've imagined. But genetics are far from the only mystery. Now, if you're like me and you enjoy making videos, then you already know the pain. You need footage, graphics, audio, and now, not after scrolling through 20 websites. That's why I use Storyblocks. I've been using them for a long time because it's fast, high quality stock clips, images, templates, and audio, all royalty free. I can drop them straight into my edits without worrying about rights. Whether I need ancient ruins aerial, glacial time-lapse, or just a clean motion graphics template, I can find something usable in seconds. So if you want to save time and upgrade your videos, then check out Storyblocks using my link, storyblocks.com slash Michael Button. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the video. So how deep does this really go? We're talking about at least 23,000 years of history here. That's an enormous span of time, especially when you think that all of recorded human civilization, literally everything from the first cities in Mesopotamia to today, fits within just the last 6,000 years. And we now know that ancient Americans accomplished much more extraordinary things than we once thought. The Coral Super Civilization in Peru began in 3000 BC. That makes it older than the conventional date for the pyramids at Giza. This city had its own pyramids, rising over 20 meters high, aqueduct systems, and structures aligned to celestial bodies. And there's no evidence of warfare, no defensive walls, no weapons. For over a thousand years, it functioned as a peaceful, trade-focused society. In the Andes, sites like Sashi Kuman, Oye Taitambo, and Puma Punku display stonework that still puzzles researchers. Blocks weighing over 125 tons, fitted with impressive precision. Some researchers think the stones at Pumapunku weren't even carved, but might have been cast using an ancient form of concrete. And crucially, you can't date stone. These achievements seem inconsistent with the known technological abilities of South American societies. And in the Amazon, LIDAR scans show entire cities hidden under the canopy. The Upano Valley in Ecuador has over 6,000 earthen mounds, roads 33 feet wide, stretching for miles. Lost civilizations of the Amazon were always thought to be a conspiracy theory, but now we know they existed, and that they may have had a peak population that reached millions of people. The question of humanity's story in the Americas is shrouded in mystery. There's much less of a record than in Europe due to conquest and the lack of writing from South American cultures. Thus, all we have are whispers, hints at a much, much older history than we thought. But if humans were here for 23,000 years at least, possibly even longer, then what else might have been built and lost over time? Genetic evidence shows that even the Clovis populations, the people we once thought were first, vanished around 9,000 years ago. They were replaced by a genetically distinct group with no Clovis ancestry, which means the supposed first Americans came, flourished, and then disappeared. If that happened once, it could have happened before. Archaeologists estimate that more than 99% of Upper Paleolithic sites are still undiscovered. The coastlines where early humans likely lived are now underwater. Sea levels during the last glacial maximum were 400 feet lower than today, so in theory, the continental shelf of North America could hold thousands of sites sitting beneath the ocean just completely untouched. Around 14,700 years ago, temperatures spiked dramatically and human populations expanded rapidly across the continent. But there were earlier warm windows, at 24,000 and at 18,000 years ago, and further back in time. Those periods could have allowed separate waves of migration, and when the climate turned cold again, those populations may have vanished, leaving almost nothing behind. Perhaps humans reached the Americas during those earlier warm periods, and then disappeared. Perhaps multiple migrations came and went, tens of thousands of years before the ones we know about. Or perhaps the oldest human story in the world isn't in Africa or Asia, but buried under American soil. Every time we push the date back, one thing becomes clear. There's far more buried out there than we ever imagined. No one knows how old America's history actually is, but one thing is certain. It keeps getting pushed back, older and older. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like or leaving a comment down below or subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time.